Good morning. My name is Liam Bedard, and I'm the executive director of SICAN, the not-for-profit trade association of psychedelic medicine and therapy companies. We are researchers, healthcare practitioners, drug developers, and suppliers producing and working with psychedelic medicine. With Remembrance Day fast approaching, we are here today to say that veterans, first responders, and other critically and chronically ill Canadians can no longer be denied or made to pay for potentially life-saving and life-changing psychedelic medicine and therapies. Numerous landmark scientific studies have now demonstrated the safety and efficacy of psychedelic drugs like psilocybin and MDMA for mental health conditions such as anxiety, depression, post-traumatic stress disorder, and substance abuse disorders, indications that disproportionately impact current and former Canadian Armed Service members. It is estimated that approximately 10 to 15 percent of Canadian veterans have been diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder, as well as other physical and mental health issues that can accompany PTSD. Last year, the Senate of Canada Subcommittee on Veterans Affairs issued The Time Is Now, a report urging federal, provincial, and territorial governments to launch and fund a large-scale research program into psychedelic-assisted therapy. Health Canada's Special Access Program has allowed applications for the medical use of psilocybin and MDMA since 2022. However, Veterans Affairs Canada currently has a policy that they will not reimburse veterans for any psychedelic-assisted therapy a major problem for veterans who are approved for psychedelic drugs through the Special Access Program. In short, while veterans can get reimbursed for the drug cost, they are unable to get reimbursed for the therapy cost, a significant burden for individuals. We are therefore calling on Veterans Affairs Canada to reimburse the full cost of psychotherapy and drugs obtained through Health Canada's Special Access Program. As such, we've been meeting with members of Parliament this week to ask the House of Commons to pass a motion to compel Veterans Affairs Canada to start reimbursing those veterans approved for psychedelic drugs through the SAP. Hey everyone, my name is Kelsey Sharon. I'm a Canadian combat veteran. I was injured in Afghanistan in 2009. I was an artillery gunner and female searcher with the British military. Throughout my time in the Canadian Armed Forces, I had experienced death and destruction on a level that I was not prepared to handle. Watching my friends die and disappear in the blink of an eye and firing on enemy forces in service and protection of my home and this country. My deployment to Afghanistan changed my life forever. Following my injury, I was told, and I quote, I, will, I would have been easier if I had died outside the wire. It would have been less paperwork to deal with. The mental and physical pain I have endured since my service has left a mark on me for the rest of my life. Before I was medically released, I was told I would never work again at the age of 21. I would never be a productive part of society. I would never have healthy children due to my exposures overseas and due to the overprescribed pharmaceutical drugs and what they could do to a fetus. In Afghanistan, I was 19 years old, five foot tall and 100 pounds. I was put on 11 different psychoactive drugs following my injury. And that was all while I was still firing in a war zone a machine gun, and an M777. I was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder, hearing loss, major depressive disorder, treatment-resistant depression, and an undiagnosed traumatic brain injury. For years, I dreamt of suicide and making the pain stop. I was willing to try and do whatever it took to make it go away. See, I didn't want to die, but I couldn't live like this any longer. Standing here today, I am one of the lucky ones but only because of a community of veterans around me that saw me and saw I was drowning, reached out their hand and grabbed me. They were willing to do whatever it took to get me the help that I so desperately needed. I was forced to leave and go outside of Canada to access psychedelic assisted therapy for treatment to save my own life. And since then in Canada, I was fortunate to receive access to psilocybin assisted therapy through the special access program with assistance from Apex Labs. But to get there was a fight I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy. While the process was brutal and at times made me feel completely helpless, what truly shocked me was when Health Canada was pushing for me to try electroshock therapy. They still wanted me to try it even though they knew I had a traumatic brain injury. They wanted me to do this before they would grant me access to psychedelic assisted therapy. 
After all that I have been through, Veterans Affairs has still denied my claim for coverage three times. I was lucky that Apex Labs stepped up to help, but not everyone will be as lucky as me. And this is not a sustainable long-term solution for care. We all need to step up and address the mental health crisis facing our veterans in this country. We have to stop pretending that psychedelic therapies are not a viable option. Veterans across the world are finally healing because of these treatments, not because of more SSRIs or opioids or pharmaceutical drugs that have to be taken every single day and often for your entire life. They are healing because of psychedelics and community, and they're able to find a purpose again. Tragically, there are some in this country that are accessing medical assistance in dying for mental health conditions, while psychedelic therapies remain largely inaccessible. How is this possible? It is critical that doctors and patients are informed about the life-saving potential of psychedelic-assisted therapies, and that there are minimal barriers for patients experience this extreme level of pain to access these treatments. I want to thank you for having me and giving me this opportunity to speak today. And I encourage any of you that are watching this, please speak up. Every single day that we refuse to give life-saving access to treatments like psychedelics, we will continue to lose more veterans to suicide. We have the life-saving solutions. We just need the support. It's time our government and those that reside inside these walls untie our hands, remove the bricks from our feet, and finally, let us save ourselves. It's the least this country could do after asking all of us to give our lives for it. It's time this country gives us our lives back. Thank you. Thank you, Liam. Uh, good morning. My name is Adam Marr. It's an honor to be here on Canadian soil once again, standing in support of Canadian veterans. I served in the U.S. Army as an Apache helicopter pilot with over 1,500 flight hours, including a combat deployment to Iraq. In 2015, I received one of my greatest assignments to support Canada's annual joint training exercise at CFB Wainwright in Alberta. It was there advising on aviation operations that I witnessed firsthand the discipline, grit, and camaraderie that define Canada's armed forces. Flying in the UH-46 Griffin within Major Greg Zwang was a highlight of my aviation career. Each time I climbed into that aircraft, I entrusted my life to him and he to me. That bond we forged in training and in trust is symbolic of the steadfast alliance between our two nations. It's a connection rooted not just in our shared missions, but in the mutual respect we've developed on the front lines. But for many of us, our fiercest battle has become the one we fight for healing at home. We share in the silent suffering and invisible wounds of service, traumatic brain injuries, PTSD, moral injuries, and the profound challenge of finding new purpose as we reintegrate to our civilian lives. The status quo response to these wounds is often a cycle of prescriptions that numbs rather than restores, magnifying symptoms rather than addressing root causes, and many veterans are left with a lifetime of SSRIs and opioids chained to treatments that keep them alive but never truly let them live. For others, like myself, the struggle is turning it off, an attack pilot, I was trained to redline everything, to live in extremes, and it left me depleted, unable to find peace or balance. But I'm here today because there is a way forward. Psychedelic assisted therapy has proven time and again to offer veterans a chance to break free from this cycle and to achieve real healing. These treatments help me rebalance my own systems. They saved my older brother's life, a Special Forces Green Beret, and they've saved countless other veterans who've helped, who've lost all hope. Today, I'm here as the Director of Operations for the Veteran Mental Health Leadership Coalition, a group of 50 plus partner organizations that include several researchers, mental health providers within the VA healthcare system, the leaders of various veteran service organizations, and many veterans who have been forced to seek out psychedelic therapies abroad or through underground providers in the United States, despite the risk of criminal prosecution. And yet, access remains a significant hurdle. In both Canada and the US, veterans who sacrifice so much are often left unable to access these treatments due to bureaucratic and financial barriers. For Canada, today's call to action is clear. We're asking Veteran Affairs to reimburse the cost of psychedelic assisted therapy 
through the special access program. No veteran should be forced to pay out of pocket for therapies that have shown they can save lives, nor should they have to navigate endless red tape to try them. This isn't just a question of policy, it's a question of trust. After years of SSRIs and polypharmacy, veterans across Canada and the US feel let down by the very system designed to support them. Statistics tell us what we already know in our hearts. Veterans are dying because we're not acting fast enough. But by championing psychedelic therapies, Canada has the chance to rebuild that trust, to show its veterans in the world that we're committed to real solutions, not just temporary fixes. Kelsey and I know what it's like to go to the ends of the earth for our countries. We did it without question and would do it again if asked. But now we're asking something of parliament. Don't let this opportunity pass. Take action and give veterans a chance at true healing by passing a motion to cover the costs of psychedelic assisted therapy. We have the solutions and we, now we need the support. It's time to give veterans in Canada and in the US and beyond the lives that they deserve, the lives they fought for and are still fighting for. It's time to honor the bond we share as allies, not just on the battlefield, but here on the home front. Thank you. Thank you, Saikan, for the invitation to speak today. I'm honored to be here fighting to expand access to potentially life-saving mental health treatments in Canada, as we've been doing in the United States over the last several years. My name is Brett Waters, and I'm an attorney, the co-founder and executive director of Reason for Hope, and co-founder of the Veteran Mental Health Leadership Coalition. I'm also a multi-generation survivor of suicide loss. Reason for Hope is named in memory of my mom, Sherry Hope Waters, who died by suicide in 2018. Her father, my grandfather, also died by suicide when I was young. He was a World War II fighter pilot shot down in the South Pacific at the age of just 16 years old. This marked the beginning of a painful cycle of intergenerational trauma. My grandfather carried the invisible wounds of war long before his suicide, and these scars unfortunately led to some traumatic childhood experiences for my mom and some of her siblings. While my mom struggled with depression throughout her life, she never shared the full depth of her pain or how early in her life it began. I only discovered the extent of her suffering through the notes she left behind, written over several years, leading up to her final note to say goodbye. Talking about family trauma and suicide loss is incredibly painful for me, as I'm sure it was for her, which is probably why she never spoke about it. My mom sought traditional therapy at times, but confronting trauma like hers can be overwhelming, and continuing therapy takes immense effort, especially when depression is so debilitating. This is why many people drop out of treatment, and even for those who complete it, many do not adequately benefit. My mom also tried antidepressants briefly. I never fully understood her resistance to them until I was prescribed them myself after her death. Like many, I hoped they would ease the pain, grief, and guilt that I felt. But while they provided some initial relief, the emotional blunting and other common side effects soon made things worse. Instead of helping me process my emotions, the, common, uh, the medications made it harder to engage with therapy. After five difficult years, I decided to stop but even that was a struggle. Each attempt to taper off brought brutal withdrawal symptoms that I didn't even know were possible. Sadly, my family's experience is far too common. Rates of PTSD, depression, and suicide have steadily increased for decades, yet we've seen little progress in developing new effective treatments. For people like my mom, who tried traditional approaches but found no lasting relief, it only gets harder over time to keep seeking help. This is why it's a moral imperative that we make it easier for people to access potentially life-saving treatments like psychedelic-assisted therapy. Substances like MDMA and psilocybin offer more than temporary symptom relief. They can rapidly reduce fear responses, enhance neuroplasticity, and deepen the therapeutic connection, helping patients make meaningful progress in ways that traditional treatments cannot. Research shows that these therapies can provide rapid, robust, and durable relief for a range of mental health conditions. I live now with a lot of guilt for being unaware of this research and the stories of healing that these therapies have made possible, as you've heard today, until it was too late for my mom. While I'll never know if these treatments could have saved her, I do know that my sister and I would have worked with her to try them. And although it's too late for her, it's not too late for so many others still suffering today for whom these therapies offer a real reason for hope. 
This is why Reason for Hope and the Veteran Mental Health